Hi guys, have long been considering adding a couple of interactive buttons to my Christmas show and using the ESP8266 I finally completed this project for Christmas 2017. This tutorial shows the steps and procedures involved in the construction process. Hopefully this will help someone looking for some guidance with a similar project. This prop stands about 36 inches and is decorated with red and green ribbons to give it that true Christmas theme. The support post has a height of about 26 inches and is made of 3 inch diameter PVC pipe inserted into a closet flange that has attached to the ground with metal spikes. The buttons are attached to a 5x8 waterproof project box mounted on top of the PVC pipe with the purpose of the prop and user instructions clearly written across the surface for convenience. The project box is connected to the PVC pipe using a 3 inch drain flange glued to the bottom and secured to the pipe with screws. The following items are required for this build. A 12 volt power supply, a DC to DC buck converter, we must D1 mini, we must dual base shield and this is optional. Protoboard shield, also optional. Two large push button switch that includes a 12 volt LED. Two small waterproof buttons as substitute for the large ones which are not waterproof. The design is very simple. The normally open pin of each switch connects the D6, which is GPIO 12, and D5, which is GPIO 14, respectively, on the D1 Mini. Both pins are also pulled to ground via a 10K ohm resistor. Here's an exploded view showing both the proto board and a dual base shield with the D1 Mini. The sketch for the D1 Mini is located on the XLite's GitHub repository. However, it was designed for an Arduino with an Ethernet shield, so it has to be modified to work correctly with the ESP8266. The first change is to create variables for the Wi-Fi SSID, Wi-Fi password, and for the IP address of the computer running the XLite scheduler. These will replace the variables for the Ethernet configuration in the original sketch. The Ethernet network connection configuration must also be replaced with the Wi-Fi connection configuration for the selected SSID. Each button in the original sketch has the same name with a different appended number that also represents its position in the pins array of the configureH file. These buttons would typically be hidden and are independent of the other visible ones in the scheduler. And while this is the ideal approach when using five or more buttons, in my bill I needed to use the same back and next button I normally use when in the web portal or in the Windows app. So I targeted these names in my version of the script. Since I'm using GPIO 12 and 14, I set the number of buttons to two and added these numbers to the positions one and two of the pins array. I then modified a section of the button press event to only test for those two GPIO pins when a button press is triggered. The button command is then sent to the send data function to be forwarded to the X scheduler server. The send data function replaces the web request function in the original script. Please refer to the links in the description below for additional information. Following is a brief demonstration of the buttons. You know Dasher, and Dancer, and Prancer, and Vixen, Comet, and Cupid, and Donner, and Blitzen.
That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching and have a great day.